I titled this talk today, Your One Answer Away. That's it. Your One Answer Away. This past week or so, I've been looking at a variety of uh, answer sheets and talking to students as they're starting to get their results in. And what I've noticed is that in a lot of cases, people are one answer away from success. And I don't know what it is that you're one answer away from. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that in a moment. But what I have seen is that people come really, really close to whatever it is that they're aiming for, whatever their goal is, whatever their purpose is in the, taking the bar. And they're just one answer away. They're that close. They're one answer away. And some of them give up. Some of them make bad decisions. Some of them really lose sight of what it is they're doing. And I don't want you to be in that circumstance. And so today I wanted to talk about what it means to say you're one answer away and what you can do to find that one answer. So I've got a couple of different uh, uh, areas of exploration that I want to talk about. So bear with me here. The first of these uh, points that I want to make is don't quit when you're on the verge of success. Don't quit when you're on the verge of success. When I look at these score sheets from students, I get two basic types. The first kind of score sheet is someone who is way, way below passing in every part of the exam, the multi-state and the state part. I mean, they're just a long way away. And typically when we talk about the exam, this person will tell me that um, there was a reason for that score. And the reasons are usually pretty legitimate. Uh, you know, there was a big thing that happened at work, or um, my wife and I had a, a, a child right before the bar exam, or, you know, some of the really bad stories are, you know, a significant other decided to leave me, or I had a family relationship, or somebody in the family died. Something big and significant happened. Or I, I was just so busy I didn't study, or I didn't take the test seriously enough to study the way I should have. There's usually some reason behind that kind of a big drop-off score. For some people, candidly, it's I'm not very proficient in English and I'm not very proficient in U.S. law. And so I get a lower score. I mean, these are the things that would make sense. And we'd say, OK, well, that, that clearly makes sense as to why you might not have had a particularly good score. So that's one group of score sheets and, and people that I talk to. But the other kind, the kind that's more prevalent is that I look at the scores and they're just a few points off. They're maybe within 10 scale points of passing the bar. And when I break it down, when I'm in a state like Florida, which is nice enough to break down the scores, now we're seeing MBE scores, uh, at least in a percentage form. I look at it and I say, wow, you did well on a couple of these essays. You did well in three or four or five of these MBE subjects. And it's just right here. You had, you had a little bit of problems in this one topic or on this one essay or, you know, Florida multiple choice or whatever it was in this one area. The problem is you're so close and then there's just this little dip. You're one answer away from success. I think that one of the things that people lose sight of is that they're so close to being successful and then sometimes they say, you know, I'm just going to give up. And that breaks my heart. It really breaks my heart because I know how hard it is to study. I know the challenges both economically and in time and in personal resources and in ego, frankly, to keep taking the test. And many of people today are taking the test over and over again. We have more repeat bar takers than we have first time bar takers in the country. So most people are not passing the bar on their first try. When you're in that situation and you fall short, it's easy to think of it as an all or nothing exercise. In other words, I failed and therefore I failed everything, but that's not really true. Typically what we see is that you did well in some areas, but in some other areas you were deficient. There was something else not working. So how do you work about on that? What do you do? Do you focus exclusively on the problem area? And my answer to that is no. We really believe in this idea called the success-based approach to learning. And the success-based approach to learning says that you take what you're doing well and do more of that. If you could get a passing score on one or two of the essays, what did you do there that we can repeat and duplicate in the other subjects? If you did well in a few of the multi-state subjects, what can we repeat and duplicate about those subjects on the other subjects of the exam? You see, 
when people give up, when they're just one answer away from success, then they're, they're throwing away a dream. They're throwing away everything that they've worked for, and they're doing it on the basis of incomplete analysis of the information. Now, I'm not saying that you should repeatedly do the same thing and keep coming up short. That's not the point here at all. It's simply to point out that most of you, if you look at your score sheets, if you're a repeat bar taker, you can find things you did well on that score sheet. If you didn't do anything well, then you're way below passing all across the board. And then I think you've got to ask what's fundamentally uh, going wrong here. What do I have to do to make something different? But outside of that, outside of that, there's enough going on that's right that you should feel like, okay, I can keep doing that. I can do more of that and I can push that up. I can find that one additional answer, whether it's an essay or a multiple choice question and put myself in success in passing the bar. Please don't quit if you're on the verge of success. I, there's nothing I hate worse than seeing someone who's close, who just throws up their hands and walks away. And you know why? Because I know I'm gonna see them five or 10 years from now, God willing that I'm still around. Uh, I've been doing this for 25 years. I see people that I saw. I just got an email from somebody from 20 years ago who took the Florida bar and failed. And now 20 years later, she's like, I can't get over it. I, I got to take it again. Well, yeah. You know, should you have given up 20 years ago? Probably not. Okay. You get the point. All right. That's number one. Don't quit if you're on the verge of success. Number two is that you should see the exam as a series of single answers, not as a broad, big piece. Here's what I mean. If you're taking an essay question, and it doesn't matter what jurisdiction you're in, the UBE, uh, Florida, Texas, California, Georgia, doesn't matter. You can basically break out every essay question, every call of the question, into a discussion of one basic legal principle. That is, every call to the question, even if there are many calls to the question, and even if the question covers multiple subjects as in the entirety, is really nothing other than one principle of law to write about, followed by another principle of law, followed by another principle of law, followed by another principle of law. Now, as I've said elsewhere in the course and online, I don't believe that the way to approach any part of the bar exam is to simply recite and memorize and give back rules. I don't think the bar examiners find that at all enticing. It isn't the work that they are looking for. It's not the skill of a lawyer. It's the skill of, um, well, it's the skill of a computer program, basically, if that's all you're doing. But if you can understand that in the essay with four calls of the question, there are four individual legal principles, and that your task is to show how to apply that principle to the facts and the problem at hand, and you do that one principle at a time, that's all it is. You're just one answer away. Deal with that first call of the question, the first principle, and then go to the next one. Do the same thing, and then go to the next one and do the same thing. The worst kind of writing that I see is the writing that just throws it all on the page, kind of like spaghetti, and says, unstrand it yourself, reader. You figure it out. I'm, I'm having a crisis here. Don't you understand? You know, it's a, it's a metaphysical existential crisis while I'm taking the bar exam, and it's your problem to figure it out. Well, no, it's not. It's your problem as the writer. And so the best way to unstrand the spaghetti is to think there's a meatball here, there's a meatball here, there's a meatball here. And with each meatball, all I'm trying to do is to take that one principle and apply it to the way that the exam is being written. The same is true for the MBE. Think of each question as being a test of one legal principle. They're not testing you on the multi-state on whether you know all the elements of all the rules. They're just not. And when you look at the questions and you break them down, the reason that I want you to do this work of analyzing the principles of law is because when you take a specific question and you recognize that it is really only asking about one principle as it applies to this fact pattern, you simplify the question dramatically. Some of you really make this too hard. You overwork it, you overthink it, you look for hidden tricks. Uh, you know, this is the old days of bar review. Uh, there was a guy with a, a company who shall go nameless, who, uh, well, he was caught stuffing an MBE in his pants in Alaska, and that was the end of him. But uh, his whole idea was make the bar exam, um, you know, uh, just uh, as complicated and impossible as you can for students so that they're always looking for a problem. And when you do that, uh, you're going to see that the result is 
uh, that you overwork it and you overthink it. So one principle uh, for the MBE, for every question in the MBE. All right. Number three. So we've said so far, don't quit on the verge of success. And we've said, see the exam as a series of single answers. All right. Number three, I want you to do a cost benefit analysis. If you're just one answer away, what's the cost of working to get that one answer versus the benefit? And here's what I mean. For some of you, the reality is that studying for the bar has great costs. It has financial costs. It has time costs. It has uh, personal relationship costs. It has a variety of things that could happen that you would think of as costs. And yet there are benefits to passing the bar. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But there are benefits to being a member of the bar. There's a reason that you're doing this. When you are just one answer away, one of the things that you have to do is start asking yourself, if I'm going to do a little bit more studying tonight, what's the cost of doing that studying versus the benefit that I want to receive? I suggest to students that they do this cost-benefit analysis from time to time. Take out a sheet of paper or a journal or something else and literally write down over a period of time, here are all the costs of studying, the time I don't get to spend with my family or my friends, the lost opportunities at work, uh, the, the, the time uh, that I'm studying when I don't get to do X, the uh, intellectual challenge of it, uh, the, the, the fact that sometimes I don't feel so smart, the fact that I'm putting my ego on the line and if I fail, it's going to feel bad to me. I mean, those are all costs. Then on the benefit side, what you want to do is to think about what it would mean if you pass the bar, then weigh those two things down. If you're having trouble motivating yourself to study, the reason is that the costs outweigh the benefits in your particular circumstance. And you've got to rebalance that. You either got to add benefit or get rid of costs. You know, we're pretty rational human beings, most of us, and we tend to do things in our own self-interest. So if we see a benefit to doing something, we do more of it. If we see a cost, we tend to do less of it. And so if you're not really able to study, if you're getting up to that point and you're saying, I just can't do it, I want you to stop and say, look, if I'm just one answer away from success, what does it mean? What do I have to do to get that extra little benefit that makes it worth the pain of doing this extra piece of study or work? And when you do that cost benefit analysis, I think you're going to find that in most cases, you can reanalyze it or rebalance it so that the benefit outweighs the cost. And look, if the costs outweigh the benefit and you can't figure out any way to change it, then really you should step away and not take the exam. There's no reason to do it and you're not likely to be successful if that's true. And sometimes that's the result people reach. But very often what happens when a student does this exercise is they come back and they go, oh, wow, I didn't realize what I was really seeing as a cost. You know, I, I didn't want my family to, to be embarrassed by me failing, or uh, I didn't want my employer to know I was leaving, taking two more weeks this time to take the bar exam again. That's a cost. And by analyzing and realizing it, then I was able to say, but yes, here's the benefit and the benefit outweighs that. And now I'm motivated to go. Okay. So the cost benefit analysis. All right. Well, if I'm talking about the benefits, I wanted to talk about that more specifically because I think there's some pretty significant benefits. And here's my fourth point. What would that one right answer, your one answer away, what would that answer mean if you got it right in your life? What would it mean if that caused you to pass the bar? Now, I've asked that question in our webinars for several years now and invited people uh, who are not in our course to simply give me their response to that. And the responses have been really extraordinary. I just wanna share a few of them very briefly with you. Uh, people said things like this, I could move nearer my aging parents and practice law. It would change my life. It's a life dream and a forever goal. Uh, I could start paying back the money that I owe. Um, I can pursue my career goals. It would allow me to be less stressed about debt. It would give me more options and it would give me financial options. And probably the number one response, I would be able to help people that I want to help. Look, regardless of your politics, I, I think a lot of us who are attorneys watched when uh, the first immigration order came out and attorneys flocked to airports around the country. You know, attorneys are rarely the heroes. You know, we're rarely the people that go to the front lines. But, but face it, admit it. I mean, even if you didn't like that they were doing it. Admit the fact that it was pretty cool that it was attorneys that went out and said, hey, I'm here, I'm willing to help. Wouldn't you love to be able to be in that position? And if you disagreed, 
and you thought that that was a bad policy, well, then go volunteer, you know, on the other side of the barricade. I don't care. But the point is, you could do something with that law degree. You could do something as a member of the bar, and you can't do it. No one had a sign up that said, I'm a paralegal, or I'm an, un, uh, you know, I, I'm a bar, I uh, failed the bar, and I can't help you that way, but here I am, and I went to law school. You didn't see that. Um, one of the comments that people made when we asked them what that benefit would be is they said it would restore my honor. Uh, my kids, my family, my spouse would be proud of me. Somebody said it would save my life. That's a pretty high benefit. Somebody else said uh, it would open doors for me. Someone else said I could do what I'm qualified for. It will bring me freedom. Yeah. And the list goes on and on and on. It's different for everyone, but there's some major reason for everyone to be doing this. You see, you're one answer away from freedom. You're one answer away from having your kids be proud of you. You're one answer away from attaining your goal of being a lawyer to finding, as somebody said, God's purpose for my life to advocate for people. I would regain my confidence. It would allow me to do the work I want. You're one answer away. That's all. You're so close. Don't give up. Just keep doing it. Isn't that why you went to this profession to begin with? Because you wanted to make a difference? Oh, I know a few of you may have decided you want to go to law school because it beat uh, looking at blood at medical school, or maybe you didn't know what else to do, or maybe a few of you went to law school because you thought you'd get rich. But you know, that's really, really a tiny, tiny minority of people. Virtually everyone that I speak to over 25 years says, I went into this profession, this career, because I wanted to do something that made a difference. Well, you're one answer away from making a difference. That's all. One answer away. And then that really leads me to my last point, which uh, I think is probably the most important. If you're one answer away, why in the world wouldn't you go all in to find that answer? Why wouldn't you go all in? I am completely bewildered by the, the folks that bring not just a knife. They don't bring a knife to a gunfight. They bring a pea shooter. They bring a nail clip to a gunfight when it comes to the bar exam. The bar exam is tougher than it has ever, ever been. There are more people failing the bar than passing the bar it, it, across the country, every jurisdiction. It is incredibly difficult. Why in the world, if that were the case, wouldn't you bring every resource that you've got to deal with it? Now, I'm, I'm really proud of those of you in our course. I appreciate so much your confidence in us and your willingness to, to take the approach that we're taking. I, I am truly bewildered, however, at the people that say, well, I'm just going to do more of the same old thing. Really? Really? Does that really make any sense at all? I'm going to do a better job of studying with the big box bar review. What? Are, are you kidding me? You know, uh, uh, during right after Hurricane Katrina, we were in the Gulf Coast and in New Orleans. And um, so I have a special memory of President Bush coming out and putting his arm around the FEMA manager, uh, uh, Michael Brown, I think it was. And he said, you're doing a heck of a job, Brownie. Well, those of us who were there knew he wasn't doing a heck of a job. I almost feel like putting my arm around and saying, you're doing a heck of a job, Barbary. <laughs> they're not. Those of us who see what's going on know they're not doing a heck of a job. They're doing a terrible job. All of the big box bar reviews are doing a terrible job and the results are showing up. And if you're taking the bar exam, you need to get all the help you can get, all the resources you can get. If you're in our course and you're in the basic course and you can afford to move up to personal or premium, you should do that. You should get all the help you can afford, all the help, all the resources, because here's what's at stake. You're one answer away from your life stream. Isn't it worth it? I, I want you to know that we want nothing more for you than to be successful. We'll meet you wherever you are, but really give it everything you've got. Don't, don't, don't take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts in your preparation. Don't take shortcuts in the work you're doing. Look at, ask questions, be there, be on it. I'm so proud of all of you who are here today. That, that's a great uh, affirmation of your willingness to be all in. Those of you who are watching in our course, you're all in. Those of you who are watching and listening later, ask yourself, are you all in or are you just playing at it? Are you just pretending to do it? You know, if you're not passionate and committed, the bar exam is going to beat you. It's just going to beat you.
And if it beats you, remember that you gave up one answer away.